Hey there, folks. Today we're going to be looking at Gain Bandwidth Product, also known as FUnity, for our op amp circuits. Basically, this is a way of looking at what the bandwidth of our amplifier is going to be. Now, the first thing I want to talk about here is the open loop response of the amplifier. This is something we've saw before. Basically, if we had what was referred to as a non-compensated amplifier, we would get a response that goes something like this. This upper break would be eh, maybe a few megahertz before this thing would fall off. Instead, what we see is a response that does something more like this. It comes out to a pretty low frequency, like maybe, I don't know, 10 hertz. And then we get a single order roll off at 20 dB per decade. And maybe this occurs at uh, one megahertz. So we might have a gain over here of 100 dB. Why do they do this, right? Why do they do it and how do they do it? Well, the why is fairly straightforward. If you were to apply negative feedback and you were operating at a frequency up in this range, you would discover that you have enough phase shift in this network, like above one megahertz, basically, that you could wind up with positive phase of, of positive feedback. In other words, if you have a couple of active lag networks, remember it's negative 90 degree per network. If you have a couple of these uh, networks active, you could wind up with an extra, you know, 180, 270, you know, whatever the heck it works out to, on top of the negative feedback that you already have. Well, minus 180 plus another minus 180 is 360. You're back in phase. Your negative feedback turns into positive feedback, and the amplifier goes unstable. So to enforce this, so this doesn't happen, they artificially throw in this low frequency limit, right? Of 10 hertz. So by the time it gets up to here, by the time it gets up to 0 dB, the uh, response is already uh, continuing, if you will, at this 20 dB per decade. Why is that important? Because if we only have one active lag network, that means a maximum phase shift of minus 90 degrees. All right, so that's minus 180 from the feedback, minus 90 from the, from the uh, lag network, that's 270. So we're not, you know, worried about going into positive feedback. Essentially, we can measure what the difference between the phase response is um, when we go through zero. Uh, we call that the phase margin, and, um, you know, we certainly don't want that to be a, um, a phase shift that would give us the total 360. So if we can get at least 45 degrees of sort of elbow room, a phase margin, that would be good. Or we could also look at that as gain margin, the point where the phase actually goes to minus 180. What's the gain there? All right. In other words, if we, if we continued along with this curve, the red curve here, um, we would like a gain margin of at least six decibels. And again, sort of an elbow room kind of thing. All right. So that's why it looks like that. How do we do it? Right. How, do the, how does the manufacturer do that? Well, a simplified version of our circuit the final couple of stages is going to look something like this. You know, we have our um, class B drive stage over here, which I'm just going to draw real quick. Like, so here's the output. Now, power supply comes up off of here. Then we have this drive transistor down here. All right, so, this is coming in from the prior stages, voltage gain stages, and so forth. And there is a capacitor right here. This is in the Miller position. This is the compensation capacitor. So we choose a capacitor such that we get a frequency like, in this case, 10 hertz. All right, remember, the Miller effect is going to effectively multiply this capacitance. That's how we maintain this. Now, what ends up happening is because we're falling at this 20 dB per decade rate, 
whatever the frequency increases is a factor. If we increase the frequency by a factor of 10 a decade, the gain drops by a factor of 10, 20 dB, or 6 dB per octave. So you go up in frequency by a factor of 2, the gain drops by a factor of 2. So it's this nice, even sort of thing, okay? Whatever happens on one side, sort of the inverse happens on the other. So if we were to plot at different points, in other words, if I said, okay, what's what's the frequency where this thing hits, um, you know, 80 dB, well, it's 10 dB per, uh, excuse me, 20 dB per decade, so there's one decade, so this must be 100 hertz. And then if we went to 60, that would go up another decade to 1K, and if we went to 40, that would go up another decade, right, to 10K. And then at 20, that would go up another decade. We'd be at 100K. And obviously then at zero, another decade, we'd be at one megahertz. So this frequency right here, we call this F unity. Looks like funity, but it's F unity, right? The, the frequency where the uh, open loop gain falls to one in ordinary form, 0 dB. All right, this is going to control the frequency response of our amplifier with feedback. Obviously, we can't get more gain um, with feedback than we have as far as open loop is concerned, right? So this red curve sort of represents uh, a ceiling, if you will. This also has a, another side effect on something called slew rate which we are going to look at in a following video. All right, so let's take, I'm gonna use this, this amplifier right here, and this would be typical for something like a 741. A 741 has an F unity of about one megahertz. You know, that's you know typical value for that device. You know, any specific device might be a little higher, or a little lower, but let's consider that we have uh, a system with a feedback factor, beta, of 0.1. Now, remember our approximation is that the closed loop gain is 1 over beta. In other words, is 10. But we came up with a, uh, a more accurate, if you will, value. This was an idealization. That the closed loop gain is equal to the open loop gain divided by 1 plus beta a open loop. Okay, so let's just kind of pop through here and see what happens at these different frequencies. If, if we come in at 10 hertz or below, A open loop is 100 dB, which in ordinary form, because we have to use ordinary forms for these, right? That's going to be 10 to the fifth. So ACL, A closed loop, is going to be 10 to the fifth divided by 1 plus 0.1 times 10 to the fifth. All right, so what do we get out of that? Well, that's 10 to the fifth, that's 100,000 over, that's 10,001. Well, you know, that's pretty darn close to 10. You know, 9.9998 or whatever it works out to. And then if we jump up to a higher frequency, so let's try it at one kilohertz, you know, what's our gain at one kilohertz? Well, we see that's 60 dB, right? Three factors of 20, that's 10 to the third, that's 1,000. So what we have is 1,000 over 1 plus um, 0.1 times 1,000, so that's 101. All right, so again, you're just a little shy of uh, 10, you know, 9.9 you know, whatever it works out to, but roughly 10. So if I'm going to plot our closed loop gain so far, what we've got is something that looks like this, right? 20 dB is a gain of 10. So it's basically coming right along that line. And I'll bump it up again, right? I go to, let's say, uh, 100 kilohertz. Well, at 100 kilohertz, right, the open loop gain is 20 dB. That's a factor of 10. So um, that's 10 over 
1 plus 0 0.1 times 10, so that's 2. Then we get 5. Okay, we're finally seeing a, a reduction in signal. In reality, this is a little bit of a simplification because we're not including the, the phase shift that's actually occurring in here. So you wouldn't quite get 5, um, but you'd be, you know, in, in the ballpark. Uh, in fact, you'd be probably closer to 7, but um, the important thing is, this is coming out like this, because obviously if we get 5 at 100, if we did it at, let's say, 10 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz, you know, it'd be even closer to 10. So this thing is coming out like this. We finally get to the 100K, and then it just sort of tracks. There's a little bit of a curvature in here, but then it just tracks the open loop response. All right, now, you do that for any other... Uh, setting of beta, in other words, any other feedback network. And you always find the same thing. You're always going to find that, like, if I set it up to a gain of 100, it's going to come out like this, and then, you know, it's going to follow this. So the bottom line is that because this is a 20 dB per decade roll-off, the product of this gain in this F2, this bandwidth limit, is a constant. Right. And that's what we call F unity or gain bandwidth product. You know, gain bandwidth product is the obvious name. You know, it describes what's going on, right? So that's literally the product of those two characteristics. So we can say then that because this is a constant, we can say that the, the upper frequency limit, F2, right, is essentially equal to the gain bandwidth product, or F unity, whatever you want to call it. I guess I'll call it F unity. Divided by the gain of the amplifier. Well, it turns out you have to use something called the noise gain of the amplifier, AN. What is the noise gain of the amplifier? Well, the noise gain, and big surprise, we're going to take a closer look at this when we do a noise analysis of the amplifier, but noise gain is 1 plus RF over RI. So it's the same as the signal gain if it's a series parallel non-inverting amplifier. It's one more if it's an inverting, you know, in other words, parallel parallel based voltage amplifier. So you always use a noise over here. Well, that's, that's really good because, you know, if you know what the F unity is, if you know what the gain is, you can always find the upper break. Or from a design perspective, you can say, well, I want a certain F2 and I need a certain gain so I can multiply those out and determine a minimum acceptable F unity for that op amp. Now I can go through manufacturer's data sheets and I can find, you know, an op amp that fits the bill. All right. So quick example. Let's use a series parallel over here. I'm going to throw in 5K and a 20K for RI and RF. Now I'm going to use a uh, 741 op amp. Very common op amp. So that I know that's a 1 megahertz device. And my question is, you know, what is F2? What's my upper brake frequency? Now, my lower brake frequency is DC, right? If there are no coupling capacitors on here, then there is no lower frequency limit. So this thing will multiply, you know, all the way down to a DC. So the first question is, what's our uh, noise gain? Well, 1 plus RF over RI is going to go this. RF is 20K, RI is 5K, so that's 4 plus 1 is 5. All right, so F2 would have to equal the F unity value divided by that noise gain. In other words, would have to equal 1 megahertz divided by 5. So F2 must be 200 kilohertz. All right, fairly straightforward. Now, um, you know, to kind of flip this a little bit, if, if the question was raised in a slightly different way, I've got this amplifier, 
and I need, I require an F2 of, you know, 400 kilohertz, let's say, then, you know, what sort of F unity do I need? So we would just multiply these things out, right? We would say the F unity would have to be the F2 times the A noise. So the A noise is five, the F, the F2 is 400 kilohertz. So, you know, we would need a 200, uh, a two megahertz device. If I want to do this in one stage, I would need a two megahertz device. Um, you know, a common op amp that you would find around, you know, like a LF411, a 351, a TL081, those would all um, meet or exceed that two megahertz. So you could use that and you'd get your 400 kilohertz. There's no other way of getting a wider bandwidth unless you sacrifice gain, right? So we always have this sort of trade-off, right? Now, if you had an inverting amplifier, things are similar. So let's draw a little inverting amplifier over here. Uh, let's say we have a 10K and a 100K. And let's say we have an LF351, uh, which you're probably going to get somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of 3 megahertz for your F unity. Let's just say this particular one is exactly 3 megahertz. And now the question is, well, what's my F2? All right, well, the signal gain is a negative 100K over 10K, or negative 10, but the noise gain is still 1 plus RF over RI. All right, so that's going to be 11. Same equation. You want to find your F2? Well, take your uh, F unity and divide it by your noise gain. So we've got 3 megahertz divided by 11. And that's going to work out to about 273 kilohertz. There you go. All right, the last thing that we might consider is what if we had a multi-stage amplifier? Like, um, I'm not going to draw the entire thing and with all the feedback resistors. We'll just do a little block diagram here. You know, what if I had three op amps in a row? And maybe, you know, let's just say I cascaded these two and there's, uh, you know, another one. So, you know, this one is critical at 200K. This one's critical at 273K. And, uh, you know, this one is critical at, let's say, 50K. What do we do for the system? Well, what we do is we look for a single dominant network. What's the lowest one? It's just like dealing with individual lag networks. And if you were doing a Bode plot for an amplifier and you had three lag networks, you find the dominant one, which one affects midband response first. So the system F2 here would be 50 kilohertz. Now, the only time that would adjust a little bit is if all of these were identical. So if it was 50K, 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 you would actually have something a little less than 50K. Um, it would, in fact, with three of them, it would be around 25K. Um, there's a little square root relation um, that's detailed in the text, but all you really need to remember, for now anyway, is that uh, it's the dominant network, and the only, only tricky bit is if we have multiple networks that are critical, dominant, at the same frequency, then we know it's going to be a little less. Because after all, if this was 50, and that was 50, and this was 50, then at 50K, you'd actually be 9 dB down, right? You'd be minus 3 here, minus 3 here, and minus 3 here. So you have to kind of go down in frequency to find where they're each minus 1 to get you minus 3 for the total, because that's your break frequency, your minus 3 dB point, your half power point. All right? Okie dokie. That covers that. Next video, we're going to look at slew rate.